We continue now at the top of Daf Kufay Amar Aleph and Maseches Baba Metziah. This is Baba Metziah Daf 105a. And the previous summit, Rava was examining some details of joint ventures. And Rava here continues, Trey Iske. Let's say there are two joint ventures, the Chad Shtara, but I write it all up into one document. So then say the Delova, then it's going to be the loss of the borrower. It's going to be the loss of the manager. And Rashi explains, Trey Iske, the Chad Shtara, say the Delova, if you have two joint ventures and one document, it's a loss of the borrower, means to say as follows, Kibel Hayom Imenu Bemana. Let's say today he accepts merchandise worth 100 dinar. Well, Lamachar Bemana, and then the next day, also another set of merchandise for 100. The chas of shtar al masayim. Now let's say he writes one document for 200. He counts it all as one. So then hifsid halova kemad defarishis. So then the lova is going to lose out. It's the reverse case of what we had on the previous one, but as Rashi explained. She'im yehe hefsid bazeh uschar bazeh, meaning if this joint venture is going to produce a loss and the other one a profit, lo yechshavu kalechad levado, since you wrote one document, you're not going to count them all independently. Ela haschar yimali hakeren tchila, rather the profit of one is essentially going to fill in the loss of the other, and then they'll divide whatever remains. So if we give a simple case, let's say one of them profited 10 and the other one lost 10. So if you're going to count it all as one, it's going to be zero and essentially no one's going to do anything. There's going to be no loss and no profit for anyone. However, let's say you would count them separately. So then the gain of 10, again, we say that when it comes to the gain, the lova is going to be able to take two thirds of the gain because the, the owner, he only gets one third of the gain. So in that situation, the lova will get two thirds of the gain, but when it comes to the loss, so then he'll take 50% of the loss. Each one is going to take 50% of the loss, and it's going to turn out that the lova is going to make more money if you do two documents, as Rashi now continues. Vim kasav beiz shtaros kemishpat hazeh. If you write two documents like this, mechashiv hefsid shel zeh levad, so then the loss of this one, that counts on its own, and again, when it comes to a loss, so there we say that the amount that the owner takes is more than the amount of profit the owner takes. Vaschar shel zeh levad, the profit of this one is going to be counted Separately, so then the owners are going to take fifty percent of the loss, but they're only going to take one third of the profits, and so that's why if you do it in one document, it ends up being the loss of the lova of the manager. And Rashi says, and all that's happening over here is Rav is giving good advice. That when you're dealing with one business venture, you should write one star. If it's two ventures, you should write two staros. That way everything will be even. And the Gemara continues, V'yamar Rav and Rav says, Haiman de Kabbal Iskam in Chavri, if somebody receives merchandise to do a joint venture from his friend, Upasan, and then it ends up losing money. And then Tarach Umalia, but then he takes extra effort and he's able to make up the loss. Velo Ode, he doesn't even let the person know that he took this effort and made up for the losses. So then he ended up again canceling out the losses. Lo Motzi Amar Lay, so he can't now say to the owner, Dori Mehech Pseida Bahada, you have to carry these losses together with me. He can't say, well, there was a loss over here. And since there was a loss, we take 50% each of the losses. He can't say that anymore. Mishum do'amar le, because the owner can say back to him, l'hachi tarach l'mal say that was why you took the effort. You specifically wanted to cover the losses by making that extra effort to make some profits. Ki heichi delo likru lach because you don't want people to call you somebody who loses out on these business ventures. And so therefore, essentially, it's all part of the same transaction. And again, he can't say that there was a loss initially and that the owner should have to share in 50% of that loss. And the Gemara continues, Vyamar Rav and Rav says, Hani da'avdi iska bahadi hadodi. Let's say two people, they have a joint venture together, Viravach, and there's a prophet. Vyamar lechad lechavri, and then one says to his friend, the Taliflog, we had a prophet, let's divide right now. Iyamar le'idach, if the other one says back, no, nirvach tfei, I want to continue, let's make more profit. Dinahu de'ma'akev, the second person, we listen to that second person, and he's allowed to say, we're going to continue in business together. Vyamar le'havli palgadravcha, now let's say the first person says, well, give me half of the profits. And let's divide. Amar Leh, he can say back to him, Rav Cholakarna Mishtabit. It's not true. The prophets go back into the principle. We're allowed to continue to try to make money. And the Gemara continues, If he says to him, give me half of the profits and half of the principal, Amar Leh, he can say back to him, This joint venture, it's lean to both of us. It's all together as one, and we can keep it together to make more profits. And if he says to him, Let us split the profits and let us split the principal. And if there turns out to be a loss, then I'll carry that loss together with you. Amar Leh, he can still say back to him, 
Tishrei Adif no, because the fortune of two people is better, it's better that we work together, and therefore essentially the second person can always tell the first person we're going to continue in this business venture, and he can stop him from splitting up. And the Gemara continues with the Mishnah, HaMakabel Sodom Echaveru, if somebody receives a field from his friend, he's acting as a tenant farmer, Velo Ratzel she doesn't want to weed the field. Viyamar Lo, and he says to Ma'ech Baslach, what difference does it make to you? He says to the owner, what difference does it make to you if I don't weed the field? Ho'el Vani No Sein Lach Es Chachircha, because I'm still going to be giving you the same amount of produce that we agreed upon anyhow. So Ein Shomen Lo Da'alach, is we don't listen to him. If Neisha Yochel Lo Mar Lo, because the owner can say back to him, L'machar Ata Yotze Mimena, Tamar, you're going to leave this field. Umalas Lafana Yasavna, there's going to be all kinds of weeds that grow in the field, and so therefore I need this field to be weeded. And Rashi explains, Velo Ratzel and Nachesh Atvu, again, he doesn't want to weed by the produce. Etin Lachachirach, he says, I'm going to give you the exact amount we, we decided upon, again, by a tenant farmer. He gives a specific amount of produce to the owner, regardless of what the field produces. Kach Vekach Kurin Shapasak the Imach, I said I was going to give you a certain amount of core. The fact that you have the weeds that are ruining the amount that this field is producing, that really just hurts the tenant farmer because he's going to take whatever the field produces and he's giving a certain amount to the owner regardless. So therefore, what do you care if I don't weed the field? But ain't showman we don't listen to him. And Rashi explains, Now this Mishnah only, apply, only applies by a case of a tenant farmer. Because if you're talking about a sharecropper, then it's obvious, of course, because then they're taking a percentage of the produce. He certainly can't say to him, what do you care? Because for sure he's going to care if he's just getting a certain percentage that the field is producing. And the Gemara says, Let's say the tenant farmer says, after this, then I'm going to plow it over, meaning to say, we'll have the field produce what it can produce. I'm not going to weed it right now, but then I'll plow ev- over everything. I'll remove all of the weeds after the fact. So still, that's also not a claim. Amar Le, the owner can say to him, because I want wheat that is good quality wheat. If you don't weed it now, it's actually going to be a problem for the current produce that is being produced. And the Gemara continues, let's say he says to him, well, what's the big deal? I'll buy you wheat from the marketplace. I just owe you a certain amount of wheat. And so therefore, again, let me weed it when I want to weed it. Amar Le, he can still say back to him, I want the wheat from my land. And if he says to him, I'm just going to weed the amount that you're going to take, meaning I'm not going to weed the entire field, but you're taking a certain amount of wheat, and that's the area where I'm going to pull out the weeds. So Amar Le, he still can say to him, you're giving a bad name to my land. People are going to see the land, it's full of weeds. So that's still problematic. Now the Gemara says Vatanan, but didn't we learn in the Mishnah? And the Mishnah just said a simple reason why he's allowed to say this to him. Mimnesha malas lefanayasavim, because if you leave the land, there's going to be a bunch of weeds. And now here the Gemara is giving all other kinds of counterclaims. And so the Gemara says, Ella, rather, the counterclaim really is, Mishum Do'amar Le, because ultimately the owner says to the tenant farmer, Bizra de Nafal Nafal, whatever seeds fell, they already fell, weeds will grow in the future. That is the ultimate problem with him not weeding the field. And Rashi explains, Vatanan, didn't we learn in the Mishnah, Hare Lo Shana B'Masis and Alataina Achas, in the Mishnah there's just one counterclaim that in the future weeds are going to grow. O Vishvila Kamar, Ein Shomalo, that's the reason why we don't listen to the tenant farmer, it's for that reason alone. Al Karchach Bahatal Yakula, that must be the main reason. Why are we giving all kinds of other reasons over here? The real reason is, he says, whatever seeds fell, they already fell, meaning, the entire claim of the owner really is that weeds are going to grow in the future if you don't weed it now. And that taina, that claim is always going to be true. Because, for example, let's say the tenant farmer says, I'll plow over everything after harvest. So he'll say back to him, he dog so granted, you're uprooting the roots, but so so the grasses that are there now, the seeds are now going to fall into the earth. I'm going to have more problems with weeds growing in the future year. And that's not going to help if you're going to plow it after the fact. It's not going to help, and that's essentially it's all the same counterclaim that the owner is telling the tenant farmer.
And the Gemara continues with the Mishnah, HaMakabel Sada Mechaveru, if somebody receives a field from his friend, in this case he's acting as a sharecropper, Velo Asta, and it does not produce enough produce to even be worth working this field, Em Yesh Ba Kadei Lahamid Kri, if there's enough that it can produce a pile of produce, Chayev Latafel Ba, then the sharecropper does have to work the field. Amr Rav Yehuda, Rav Yehuda says, My Kitzvah Bekri, what kind of set amount is a pile? It should be a different size pile, depending on how fi- how big the field is. El Em Yesh Ba Kadei Nafila, rather Rav Yehuda says, you have Evaluate how much seeds are being put in, and if the amount that is produced is more than the amount of seeds that are put in, so then already it's worth working the field. And Rashi explains, Let's say the field only produces a little. And so the sharecropper, he doesn't even want to bother working this field anymore. It's not, it's not even worth his effort. If you can take that produce and turn it into a pile, that's considered sufficient. The Gemara will explain how much exactly that is. Meaning to say he's going to have to work the field against his as well, even if he feels it's not really worth it. And Rashi says, So now this Mishnah is talking specifically about a sharecropper, because if you're talking about a tenant farmer who always gives the same amount of produce to the owner regardless, so what difference does it make to the owner of the field if he works it or doesn't? So He still has to give him the same amount anyhow. So obviously this is only talking about a case of a sharecropper where a certain percentage of the produce is going to the owner and a certain percentage to the share crapper and then Rabbi Yehuda's response was Ma kitzva bekri, ma kitzva yesh, im kitzvasam lo kri l'shir, chi of tipol sada gadola l'shir kri, v'sada katana l'shir kri what's the difference that you're giving a set amount of a pile, that doesn't make any sense because the effort taken for a larger field, you're going to have a larger amount a corresponding proportional amount of pile that's required, if it's a smaller field it's going to be a smaller amount and so rather Rabbi Yehuda says, elem yesh bakadei nafila, rather you have to evaluate is the pile, is it worth more more than the seeds that are being put in. The idea is that you're then going to be able to plant it again the next year from the produce that was produced this year. If it's not producing enough that you can do that, then it's not worth it. That's the seeds that you put in. You're going to put those seeds into the ground by hand. And so then again, if it's not producing enough to cover that, then it would not be worth it. And the Gemara says, Tanu Rabbon and the Rabbis taught, Hamakavil Sadam Echaveru, if somebody receives a field from his friend, Velo Asasa doesn't produce, Em Yesh Bokadei Lahamid Kri, if there's enough, if it produces enough to form a pile, Chayev Latafil Ba, so then the sharecropper does have to work the field, Shakach Kosev Lo, because that's what's written for him in the contract, Ano Okim Vaonir Veezra, I'm going to stand, and I will plow, and I will plant, Veechsod Veamer Veedosh, and I will reap, bind, and thresh, Veidri Veokim Karya Kadamach, and I'm going to winnow, and I'm going to put a pile before you. palgan. You're going to take half. yodi palgan. I, because I've put forth effort, I am going to take half. And the Gemara continues, How much is considered to be a sufficient pile? Amr Rabbi Yossi, Rabbi Chanina, Rabbi Yossi, Rabbi Chanina says, It's in order that the winnowing shovel can stand. If you put it into the pile, it's able to stand up. And the Gemara says, they had the following question, What if you can see the edges of the winnowing shovel, it sticks out, it protrudes on both sides? Is that a sufficient pile? And the Gemara says, Tashma, come and hear the following proof. Amr Rabbi Avo, Rabbi Avo said, to me it was explained from Rabbi Yossi, Rabbi Chanina, as follows, Kol kones It has to be that this winnowing shovel, it can't see the sun, meaning it needs to be totally covered by the pile. And the Gemara continues, Itmar, it was stated the following Machlokas Amoraim in terms of measuring what the size of the pile has to be. Levi Omar Shalosh Soyan, Levi says it has to be three saw. The Vey Rabbi Yanai Amri, the Yeshiva of Rabbi Yanai, they say saw Asayim, it has to be two saw. Amr Reish Lakish, Reish Lakish says, so Asayim Sha'amru, when we say that the pile has to be two saw, Chutzman Ha'utzah, that's after you take account of what was spent, meaning you have to deduct what was spent, and then if you have two saw remaining, so then we say that is sufficient. And the Gemara continues, Tanan Hasim, we learned in a mission over there, this is in Maseches Uktzin, Paritzei Zesim Vanovim, if you have inferior olives and grapes, 
The Gemara in a moment will explain what the word paritze means. Beis Shammai Metam and Beis Shammai say that can be makabel tuma, meaning it's considered to be food. That can be makabel tuma even though it's inferior. Or Beis Hillel Metar and Beis say no, it's tahar. It cannot be makabel tuma because it's not considered to be food. My paritze zesim. What is this language of paritze zesim? Amar Ravuna Ravuna says rishe zesim. What it means is wicked olives. We mean wicked olives. We mean to say that they don't produce oil. Amar of Yosef, Rav Yosef says, Umay Kro, where do we see in the Pasuk that the word Paritse means wicked? The Pasuk says, Uvene Paritse Amcho Yinosu Lahamid Chazun Vinichalu. It says the Paritse Amcho, they're going to try to establish a vision and they will stumble. The Pasuk is talking about wicked people. So you see that's the definition of Paritse. Rav Nachman Bar Yitzchok Amar Mehacher, Rav Nachman Bar Yitzchok says from here from the following Pasuk, Vaholid Ben Paritz Shofech Dam. It talks about a Ben Paritz who spills blood. So you see that the Paritz is a wicked person. And the Gemara continues, Vekama Paritze Zesim, how much is considered to be inferior olives, meaning how much oil do the olives produce that that's considered too little. Rabbi Lazar, Amar Rabbi Lazar says, Arbas Kabin Lakora, it means four kav per beam. When you press the beam once on the olives, if it only produces four kav, that's too little. Tevei Rabbi Yanai Amri, in the yeshiva of Rabbi Yanai, they say, Sosayim Lakora, it's two saw per beam. Two saw is actually three times the amount of four kav. And that's why the Gemara now says, Velo Pligi, they're not really arguing. Habi Asra Demaili Kura Ba'olal, in one place, we're talking about a location where they put a core into the basket that's used for the press. And Habi Asra Demaili Tlosa Kurn Ba'olal, in the other one, they put in three core, that's three times the amount. It's just a question of how many core of olives are used in order to determine the amount of oil that if it produces that little oil, it's still considered inferior. And the Gemara continues, Tanu Rabban and the rabbis taught, and we will continue with this discussion in the next video on Daf Kufhei Amid Beis.